ready? All right. So we're standing here at, underneath or sort of nearby one of the many signs of corruption here in the city of Pittsburgh. Signs of corruption relative to the Ravenstall administration. Looking at the LED sign on the Grand Street Transportation Center. I have to drive by here, walk by here, bike by here regularly. I'm often with my kids. They're always asking me about this thing. What's the deal with this sign? What's the deal with that spot up there? And it is, it's a spot on the city. It's a spot as far as development and growth here in Pittsburgh, because as I said before, it's one of the signs, one of the many signs of corruption. Take a look at that LED sign. What do you see? You see the fact that this administration chose to give an over-the-counter permit to one of the largest LED signs in the city, if not the largest, no public process whatsoever. None whatsoever. I was a newly elected councilman serving on council when I had to file a lawsuit to put an end to this thing. Not because I hate the LED sign, this is not about the sign, it's about the administration and their failure to think about the future of this city and what we need. So you look at the, the absence of a public process, which has become also the hallmark of this administration. Take a look at the fact that once there was a lawsuit, this administration refused to get involved and to take a stand and to solve the issue. They adopted a wait and see approach to this project. Let's also not forget that that sign, one of the most important advertising signs in the city, if it were to go up and be put into place, one of the richest as far as advertising revenue signs the city could ever have was not bid out. It was a no bid contract given to Lamar and we know the connections that Lamar had to this administration and specifically to Pat Ford. Here's another sign of corruption here in the city of Pittsburgh. Pat Ford, let's not forget this mayor, this young mayor appointed Pat Ford, not director of planning. They appointed him development czar. He was at one point in charge of the parking authority, the housing authority, the urban redevelopment authority. This guy exercised a tremendous amount of power and was not called czar because he had no power. He was called czar because of his power. He was called czar because he worked daily with the administration to get deals done, to get it done, so to speak, in the city of Pittsburgh. And this is what we're left with. That sign not finished and in a court of law. We're left with that sign, which will ultimately cost this city. It will cost us because we've lost revenue if it goes up. It will cost us if it doesn't go up because Lamar will sue as it is now. It will cost us in so many ways. It will cost us as far as losing confidence that our government is actually making decisions in the interest of the public. But it also costs us money. Look at this check. $100,000 to the development czar, more than $100,000 to the development czar in the city of Pittsburgh. Let's not forget that we continue to pay this check through June 30th. No surprise, just a few weeks after this election, Pat Ford was given hush money. That's what it is. Let's call it out. Let's not forget. We haven't forgotten, for God's sakes. We're paying for it. This is hush money. Let's just take a look at the contract. What are we talking about? This has been made public many times, but let's not forget it. And in fact, let's get some answers. If you turn to section seven of this contract, it's a public document. The website's linked in the, the press release that we've given you so you can go and take a look at it. Section seven says basically that the mayor and Pat Ford will not talk about any actions that are called actionable items, actionable conduct is called. That means anything that might possibly generate a lawsuit, they are forbidden from discussing. It's bad enough that Pat Ford was given hush money at the taxpayer's expense of $100,000. He hasn't worked in I don't know how many months, over a year, I believe. Given $100,000, that's bad enough. Our mayor is refusing to answer questions about this sign, the signs of corruption in this city, about this check, and why we need this contract. He has refused. That's the worst part. We're paying this amount 
But the worst part is, by contract, he has bound himself to keep quiet, even when we need the answers. And if he does it, there are other things. If Pat Ford or the mayor are subpoenaed, this contract says that the first action that they will take is to notify each other and make sure that they do not have to speak. They will try to quash the subpoena so that they do not have to speak in public so that this hush project can continue to cost taxpayers and to continue to keep us in the dark. This isn't a sign of corruption, it's clear. It additionally goes on to say, and this is perhaps the most important part, that if Pat Ford is to talk about anything that he did, any actionable item, anything, let's talk about that rolling rock sign, let's talk about the dinner with the executives from Liberty Pacific. If Pat Ford says one thing, he loses $25,000. That's $25,000 that we have said through the mayor, Mayor Ravenstahl has given of our money to Pat Ford. $25,000. And what's more, and this is astonishing, our mayor, duly elected by the people in 2007, is required by this contract to keep his mouth shut lest the taxpayers end up paying $25,000 for him speaking out of turn. That's hush money. That's a sign of corruption. That's unacceptable in this city. We should not tolerate this form of garbage governance. We need to make change and we need to make it now. People have an opportunity to elect the new mayor on May 19th. They have three choices. And as they go to the polls, as they go to vote, they should consider well the very clear signs of corruption in the city of Pittsburgh and vote for change on May 19th. Thank you.